Hey there, welcome to the YouTube channel. I pray that this message encourages you and it helps you grow and become more like Jesus. And make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can continue to grow and learn more. Enjoy. If you would, please turn in your Bibles to Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2, we're on our series on the road to the cross. So we're looking at the life of Jesus and the people he encountered and, and spoke to and, and ministered to. And we are going to see more about Jesus and what he's up to then and what he's up to today. In this story, we're going to see a paralyzed man whose life was changed forever. We don't know anything about him. We don't have context uh, for this man, except that uh, four, four men and possibly four friends or neighbors uh, brought him to Jesus and they wanted to see him change forever. I don't know, maybe they were tired of carrying him around on a mat, who knows? Or they saw really what I believe is an opportunity for their friend to be changed forever and to be physically healed. And think about this for a moment. We live in a culture and a world where things seem to be hopeless and maybe this gentleman's life seemed hopeless as well and his situation of being paralyzed seemed hopeless. But when Jesus comes on the scene, the news starts spreading that miracles are taking place and that people are being healed. And so these men get this idea that perhaps if we bring this this friend of ours, this man on the paralyzed, or the paralyzed man on the mat, if we bring him to Jesus, his life would change. That's a good idea, isn't it? It was love, it was, it was hope, it was love, it was all those things to bring this gentleman to Jesus. And so that's where we're at here. And let's read in verse one of Mark two. When Jesus returned to Capernaum several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. Soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no more room even outside the door. While he was preaching God's word to them, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. I wanna stop there for a moment. I want you to notice something. Jesus is preaching, first of all, because he was called to preach. He was sent to preach the good news. It's one of the main tasks of Jesus on earth in his ministry to preach. And it's a reason why there's so many people there because when he preached and taught, he did it with so much authority that they were drawn to Jesus. But I want you to notice what he preached. It says he preached the word of God. Church, let it be that you and I preach the word of God. Jesus himself is preaching the word because he believes in his father's message. He believes in the message that he has come to deliver. There's power in the gospel being proclaimed. Amen. Let it not be that pastors are preaching some other word, preaching their own word. Let it not be that we preach our own word. The gospel is good enough. If it's good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for us. Amen. I'm glad we agree. So these four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd. So they dug a hole through the roof above his head. Something interesting in the book of Mark is the word crowds come up a lot. And it's actually not in the positive sense always. It's, it's actually more in the negative sense. And, and here's the thing about this. In this sense, the crowd was a more of a negative form because they were in the way. And in the gospel of Mark, we see too that crowds would gather around Jesus like the bleeding woman who wanted to touch the hem of his garment. And if she did, she would be healed. And so she bumped into him or everyone was bumping into him and she touches his, the hem of his garment and she's healed right away. See, you can have large crowds in churches and you can have large crowds following you, but you need to have faith in Jesus Christ to see a difference in people's lives. And also we wanna encounter Jesus and not just emotional feelings or anything like that. We want the spirit of Christ to move in our services and in our meetings with our friends and all those things. Well, they couldn't bring him because there was no room. So they, they had this in, 
ingenious idea to go on the roof. So they climbed the side of the steps on this home and the roof were, were made out of wood beams and cross beams and in the middle would be plaster made of clay and mud and grass. And so they would dig through to lower their friend at the best place you could lower a friend, the feet of Jesus. Only thing is they did it while he was preaching. The audacity to do that. Now, this is what happens next. See in their faith, what, what, what did Jesus see? Well, if you're preaching, all of a sudden mud is hitting you in the face. That's some faith right there. See in their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, my child, your sins are forgiven. All of a sudden you can hear a pen drop. I can imagine today if we heard this, you know the record scratch when something awkward happens? I can imagine that happening today because Jesus said, my son or my child, your sins are forgiven. Well, wait a second, we brought him here to be healed physically. Let it be known today that this scripture is telling us something vital and very important. Your spiritual healing is more important than your physical healing. <clears throat> Why? What good is it to be able to walk into hell? What good is it for us to be healed physically but not have salvation spiritually, to be changed spiritually? What good is it for the man to gain the whole world but yet lose his... See, I told, you're a disciple maker. I told you guys, you can go out and make disciples. You know the word. What good is it for us to get all these exterior things, but the interior life needs to be radically changed by Jesus Christ? So he sees his greatest need first and forgives him of his sins. And this was a problem for the critics at the scene, the religious teachers or the Pharisees. And this is what it says in verse six. But some of the teachers of religious law who were sitting there thought to themselves, what is he saying? This is blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. They're actually right. Only God can forgive sins. And Jesus is about to take them to divinity school. Jesus knew immediately what they were thinking, so he asked them, why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easier? This is a brilliant question, by the way. Brilliant question. Is it easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven? Or stand up, pick up your mat, and walk? Why is that a brilliant question? Because you can say someone's forgiven but not see the results right away. So what does Jesus do? He's, he's I'm gonna prove it that he's forgiven. So I will prove to you, and he didn't have to do this, but he chose to. I will prove to you that the son of man, often a, a title he calls himself, a humble title, okay? He walked around talking about himself in this moment. So he's saying son of man, it's also mentioned in Daniel as a title for Jesus. So I will prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, stand up, pick up your mat and go home. Now this gentleman has to now operate in his own faith in obedience as well and stand up, pick up his mat and go home. Verse 12 says, and the man jumped up grabbed his mat and walked out through the stunned onlookers. They were all amazed and praised God, exclaiming, we've never seen anything like this before. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Guess what, church? We have a God, our God, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who can change your life so radically that you would come into a house on a mat and then walk out carrying it. Praise the Lord. He wants to turn your life around, starting with your greatest need, and that's salvation of your soul. Jesus is the Son of God. He is God in flesh on earth, incarnate, Emmanuel. He came to forgive us of our sins, to give us spiritual healing. And he also has the power to heal physically and he still is today. And he proves it in this story and he continues to prove it in our world. Praise the Lord. 
That's who we serve. That's who we put our faith in. Let's look at the faith of the four men, by the way. The four men, I, I love, I love this story. Before I forget, let me tell you right now, you can bring your friends to our play, The Rock. How do I bring people to Jesus? Let me answer that question. How do I bring people to Jesus? One way you can do that is bringing them to our Easter play, The Rock, so they can see the gospel presented in front of their eyes. Do not underestimate the gospel of Jesus Christ being presented here in a moment, in an hour and 15 minutes, God can change a life. Bring some people in your car. I love these men. These men inspired me so many times to bring people to Jesus. By the way, Jesus does go to people too. You know that, right? He has no problem going to people. In fact, he's doing that all the time. But we can also help bring people to Jesus. You need friends like these men. You and I need friends like these men, and we need to be friends like them as well. Amen? When our friends are in need, we need to bring them to the place that's going to make a difference, and that's to the feet of Jesus. You need friends, and we need to be the friend that's not going to take our friend to the bar. There is no answer at the bar. Look, pints of ice cream taste great. It does not fix problems. Going to the gym can burn off some steam, but it's not going to fix your friend's problem. Having a talkathon is not going to fix someone's problem. We need to talk to God about their problems and let God deal with those issues and help them and deliver them in Jesus' name. May we be corrected today to start bringing people to the feet of Jesus by praying with them. We can bring people to the play. We can bring people to church. Do not underestimate the presence of God working in this room in an hour and 15, 25, depending on how much Ryan wants to preach today. Do not, do not underestimate that. Parents, my fellow Uber drivers for your kids, well, you're not Uber drivers, you're just, you're just, you're a taxi for your kids. Do not underestimate bringing these kids to church. Even if they're kicking and screaming and all that stuff, the Holy Spirit can get a hold of them when they come in here on Sunday morning or Wednesday night, whenever the youth are meeting and the kids are meeting, God will get a hold of their hearts and change them because we preach Jesus at this church. And when Jesus is here, he's gonna move. Do not underestimate the simple act of bringing someone on a mat or your car to the presence of Jesus Christ. He works. He works. I realize it's a little more expensive now to bring people to church. He provides. He provides. It's worth it. It's worth it. My son's like, hey, I want to help out with uh, the tech team. Oh, man, that's, that's seven in the morning, brother. <laughs> and my wife and I look at each other, we question it for a second, and we realize God is raising my son to serve in the church. We better bring him. We better bring him. <laughs> Praise the Lord. They had faith enough that they're willing to dig out a roof in the middle of Jesus' sermon because they believed if they get this man to the presence of Jesus Christ, he will be healed. They didn't, they didn't expect the whole forgiveness part. So it was even better. I don't know who your kids are. I don't know who your neighbors are or your co- I'm excited, you can tell, right? I'm all yelling at you guys, you know, because I, oh my goodness, I just caught myself doing that. I, let me tell you something, let me, listen, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh man, emotional intelligence just kicked in. I'm here to declare some faith in this room. Listen, I don't care how far gone these people are in your life, you get them in the presence of Jesus. By the way, Jesus is already going there. He's already meeting them where they are because he moves by his spirit. Jesus is going to work if you believe it. He can save the worst sinner. If you want to grade people by that way, but you shouldn't. He will save anyone. 
And on top of that, he will do signs and wonders and healings and miracles, and he would change someone's life physically as well. That's who we serve. That's who we believe in. So what is faith? That's an important question to answer. What is faith? They believe that Jesus would do this, not them. Believe in who Jesus says he is and that he will do what he says he will do and watch him work. You, all you need is the seed of a mustard seed of faith, just the faith of a mustard seed. We, we bring people to Christ or we believe Christ is going to them and pray Christ to their rooms, to their homes, to their hearts, to their lives. We pray and we believe just one moment can change their life forever. Praise the Lord. Be a friend like that. And make sure you have friends who aren't going to talk your ears off, but they're going to talk to God for you. We should be bringing our friends to our homes for Bible study or our coffee meetings. We should be bringing people any chance we can. Don't wait till Sunday morning to help people encounter Christ. We are called to go and take Jesus to wherever we are. We have been given authority and power to do it in Jesus' name. You can do it and you will be successful. And here's the thing, do not underestimate your text messages and emails and posts. They're planting seeds. It may take time to see them grow. It usually does. And then let me close with this and we're gonna gather around the altar and pray for healings and and for freedom and deliverance. The devil's working really hard to, to try to get you to believe you're not forgiven. If, if this was proof, when he was healed, if this was proof that he was forgiven, the cross is proof that we're forgiven. The cross is proof that we're forgiven. That's all the evidence I need. It really happened. It really took place. But here's the thing. You got to believe you're forgiven. Are you, are you completely shackled by some emotional struggle today? Know this. Who the son sets free is free indeed. You are free today in Jesus' name. Physical ailments, infirmities, sickness. It's scary to think about, wow, that person can walk now. It's intimidating. But guess what? Nothing's too hard for God. The results are up to him. We come with faith and we leave the results and the outcome in God's hands. Jesus has come to do this even in here today. I get it. I know it can be intimidating or scary, but it's possible because God, with God, all things are possible. God, build our faith in this room today. God, restore our faith. Help us not to be like skeptics in this story who, who missed the bigger picture, God. Lord, help us to see that you are God in flesh, your son Jesus is. And Lord, he has the authority to forgive and heal in this place today. Lord, open our hearts to receive more faith, Lord God, that as the word says, we believe but help our unbelief, God. Fix that, Lord. Fill it, Lord Jesus, in this place, God. God, we step out in faith today as we come down to the altar, Lord, believing you're gonna set us free from that anxiety. Set us free from that fear, Lord God. Set us free from that shame that we've been walking in because of our past life or even current things we've done, Lord. Lord, may we come to you in repentance and know that on the other end of that, that decision to repent is the forgiveness that you have for us, Lord. And Lord, help us to not be focused on our infirmities, Lord, as, that we've even we would live with our whole life, Lord. God, I pray today that they would be healed in Jesus' name. Not just in this place, but even in our homes, Lord. Even as we worship God, begin to heal emotionally, spiritually, and physically, Lord, in Jesus' name. 
We are putting our faith in Christ, not in ourselves. So God, we walk by faith as we pray for these needs today in this room, Lord. Lord, move from the front to the back, God. Move online, Lord Jesus. May we declare today with faith, God, healing and deliverance and freedom in Jesus' name. Lord, we worship you and magnify your name. We thank you, Lord, for what you want to do in this place. God, you're still forgiving, so you're still healing. The blood continues to save. Your power continues to heal. Oh, Lord, move in this room right now, Lord God. Remove doubt, Lord Jesus. God, you did it then. You'll, you do it now. You'll do it again. Can we stand together as we worship and prayer, prepare our hearts? And don't, 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 don't wait. If you need to come down during worship, come down. We're going to have people praying for you, anointing you with oil. And let this be a practice of our lives. And may we also be empowered to go out today by the power of the Holy Spirit to go out today for healing and to pray for people. Church, do not wait for Sunday to believe this to take place. Believe that you can leave her today and pray and put your faith in Christ and he will save. He will help people believe in him and he will use you to heal people. Amen. He will. He's done it. God, we come to you. We ask you to move, Lord Jesus. We worship you in this moment. Prepare our hearts, Lord God. Prepare our minds, Lord God. Build our faith, Lord. Thank you, God, that our faith is in you, not ourselves, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Save lives in this moment. Deliver, Lord. Set free, God. Years of, of bondage, Lord. Years of baggage, Lord God. Change minds and hearts today. Do miracles and signs and wonders and healings in this place. We thank you, Lord. Let's worship him. Thank you. Here as we wait, seek your face. Come and make your throne upon our praise. Here in this place. Everything in life, 
Your story. 
prompted to do something Bobby if you're okay with it can I can I pray for him publicly been praying for our brother over here to be healed Bobby can we join together and pray for healing for him thank you God thank you Lord thank you God we thank you God for your healing we thank you, God, for your healing, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for your healing today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for your glory, Lord Jesus, not our own. We put our faith in you, Jesus, the healer. Lord, strengthen his knees, strengthen his legs right now, strengthen his spine, Lord God. No need for canes, Lord God. No need for canes walking in your power, Lord God. Walking in your power, Lord God. Walking in your power, Lord Jesus. For your glory, God. For your glory, God. Thank you, Lord. Your compassionate heart heals him today. Your love heals us in this room today, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for healing eyes, Lord God. For healing our ears, Lord Jesus. For healing our bones, Lord God, in this room, Lord God. For healing knees, Lord God. Return, Lord, the ligaments, Lord. Return the muscles, Lord God. Return the strength, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Move through his body. Move through everyone here, Lord God. Heal us, Lord Jesus. We give our infirmities to you, Lord God, and we ask for your healing touch in this place, Lord God. We have crazy faith, God, because you are so good, Lord God. We have faith that would look crazy to the world, Lord God, but you call it faith, Lord God. You call it faith, Lord Jesus. We have faith, God, for his touch right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, that he walks out of here, Lord, on, his, on your power, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, God. Praise you, Lord God. Praise you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, God. We give God the results, amen? We give God the results. We give God the results. We give God the outcome. We give God the outcome. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I trust God for healings. It can be hard at times because you're asking what looks impossible to the world, but to God it's possible. And God heals when he wants to heal, how he wants to heal, and we trust him for the results. Praise the Lord. One of the messages I got before this Sunday in my heart is that we're gonna look foolish to the world when we ask for healings and miracles, but to God, it's faith. What may look foolishness is faith. Praise the Lord. I'd rather step out in faith in front of everyone and pray for that healing than not. Praise the Lord for his healing today. Thank you, God. God, fix, fix us, Lord. Fix our heart and mind, Lord God. Fix our heart and mind, God. We've been, we've been walking in our human perspective way too much. We have not been walking in kingdom perspective, Lord. Lord, forgive us for that, God. Forgive us for our doubt and our skepticism, Lord. Lord, forgive us, God. We're sorry, Lord. We're sorry, God, for not asking for the impossible because in you it is possible. God, we thank you, Lord, that you still forgive, so you still heal. You still heal. And we thank you for that, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Lord, Lord, I pray that you would use this church to go out in this community to do signs and wonders in your name, not ours, in your name. 
in the power of the Holy Spirit that we would go, Lord, and believe and trust you, Lord. And may we as a church, God, not forget the greatest healing needed, the spiritual healing, the salvation of souls. God, may we not be afraid to explain the gospel, the good news of Jesus. May we not be afraid to share our testimonies of our changed lives because of Jesus. God, give us boldness and courage as we leave this place. Lord, may we trust you with the results. God, go before us when we meet others, Lord. And may your spirit have already tilled the soil and worked in the, in the heart of that man or that woman or that child or that youth, God. May you already work ahead of us, God, so we just harvest what you've already done. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory and praise for the, for the testimonies that's gonna take place because of today. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. If you need, if you want, if you need prayer down here, uh, we do have a water baptism to prepare for. But if we, we have some time to pray for you, if you couldn't get down here, so come on down so we can pray over you.